is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are A new look to the D-backs lineup today, hoping to shake things up, shake off this four-game losing streak, and avoid a sweep against the Giants. David Peralta's on the DL. Michael Bourne is here, and today Chris Herman will do something no Diamondback has ever done. D-backs baseball is brought to you by Sanderson Ford. Good afternoon from Chase Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly along the way. This is it, the series finale, D-backs and the Giants. Ruby De La Rosa goes for the Diamondbacks and the veteran Matt Cain for the Giants. The headline going into this game is, however, the look to the Diamondback lineup today. Goldie drops down to the cleanup spot. Chris Owings moves from center field to shortstop. And in center field, try and hold your applause, Mr. Brenly, a catcher, Chris Herman. You can't get enough catchers. <laughs> Don't get all field. emotional on me now. Now, we did see Chris Herman play right field at Coors Field and did a really nice job. Looked very comfortable, very instinctive in right. How he'll do in center remains to be seen, although guys who play outfield for a living will tell you it's much easier to play center than either one of the corner outfield spots. So hopefully a good day for the backup catcher Manning center field today. No Diamondback has ever started games at catcher and center field in the same season. The last time Chris was in center was in a ball in the Florida State League when he was playing minor league ball for the Twins. That was 2010. We gave you the bad news on David Peralta, right wrist inflammation, so he goes to the DL. And Michael Bourne, who was acquired last week, comes up from Double A Mobile. He is in uniform sometime today, is expected to be here by the time the game starts. Yeah, the Michael Bourne watch is on, waiting to see if he shows up in the ballpark in time to be a, a factor in the ball game today. And for David Peralta, he hasn't started in a week, so you can backdate that DL stint. Technically, he's already served half of it. So we are set to go with a new look to this Diamondback lineup. Ruby De La Rosa and Matt Kane, the D-backs and the Giants coming up next on Fox Sports Arizona. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. By Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new double Jack burger today only at Jack in the Box. By Yancey's Fancy, New York's finest artisan cheese. And by your Valley Honda dealers, where you get more standard features for less money.
to the ballpark, Mr. Chuck Drago. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and please remove your hats. Please direct your attention to the field as we honor the United States of America and pay tribute to our veterans, active duty, and retired men and women of our armed services. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the San Francisco Giants invite you to join in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner performed by the Kyrene Del Millennio Elementary School Choir. And up inside Chase Field, the D-backs and the Giants, the finale of the four-game series. In your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks is Ruby De La Rosa. As dominant Tuesday at Coors Field as we've ever seen him, he's won three of his last four starts, allowing one run or fewer in his last three wins. And Bob, it looks like Ruby believes in himself out there. You can see it, and that seems to have made all the difference. Yeah, that outing in Colorado went a long way towards helping to build his self-confidence. Seven and a third gave up only four hits and one run in that ball game. Struck out six Rockies batters and had a great slider in a ballpark that doesn't lend itself well to breaking pitches. So. Hopefully that will lead right into another good outing today for Ruby De La Rosa. First Bochy's Giants three over 500 and today they look for their first four game sweep in this ballpark since 2010. Yeah, Bruce Bochy doesn't play with his lineup a whole lot but uh, day game after a night game a few changes Denard Spann once again at the top in center field Joe Panic at second base Hunter Pence in right field Brandon Belt over at first base Brandon Crawford back in the lineup at shortstop with Angel Pagan in left. Connor Gillespie at third base Trevor Brown doing the catching for Buster Posey today and veteran right hander Matt Kane on the mound. No Duffy and no Posey for Bruce Bochy. Hunter Wendelstad is our plate umpire. He has the balls and strikes. We are set to go the Diamondbacks and the Giants on a Sunday afternoon in downtown Phoenix. 
And there's strike one from Ruby. Span having an enormous series. He's at 280 now with a home run. He has eight hits in the series, four for four last night, including a triple to lead off the ball game. Ruby De La Rosa says he has just decided to let it fly on the mound. Just go out there, pitch, and don't look back. As Satchel Page once said, they might be gaining on you. A roar to Segura. But no one's catching up to Ruby these days. He's won three of his last four starts. His ERA in those four starts is 208. Our eye on defense for the D-backs is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Chris Herman, that's right. Chris Herman playing center field this afternoon. Yasmani Tomas in left, Brandon Drury in right. It'll be Lamb and Owings on the left side of the infield. Segura and Goldschmidt on the right side. Wellington Castillo behind the plate. And right-hander Ruby De La Rosa on the mound. Trying to get some offense going against this giant team. Joe Panic now has supplied a lot of their offense in their three wins in this series. He's hit safely in five straight games, 256 and five home runs. In the air, third base side, Owings and Lamb. CO has it in fair territory. Two up, two down for Ruby. That'll bring up Hunter Pence, who's been moved up into the three hole today. 288 leading the Giants in home runs and RBIs. This one off Patrick Corbin last night, skipped off the top of the fence and left. 376 feet, three inches. Right off the top of the fence and on over into the front row of the bleachers out there and left just enough to get it out of here. Two outs on five pitches for Ruby in there and there's strike one to Pence. That home run is sixth of the year. And the 200th of his career. Big swing and a miss, and Ruby's ahead 0 and 2. That's the slider that works so well for Ruby De La Rosa in Colorado, as I mentioned, a place that doesn't lend itself well to breaking pitches. There's another one. He got it. Three outs on eight pitches. Couldn't ask for a better start. Diamondbacks coming up against Matt Cain. The veteran Roddy Matt Kane, your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Giants, still looking for his first win this year. He's actually lost eight straight decisions dating back to last July. And that's a career long losing streak for Matt Kane and the longest by a Giants pitcher in nearly three years. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a struggle for the veteran right hander. Not only that, but he's not getting a lot of support from his offense. Just over two runs a game in support when he's in the ballgame. That's the third lowest of any major league pitcher. So those two things combined. Lead themselves to an 0 5 record with an ERA over six and a half. 
Gene Segura leads it off for the Diamondbacks. 340 and five home runs. Drive this one toward the right field corner, but it's leaking into the seats and out of play. Segura 0 for 5 last night. That snapped his 11 game hitting streak. Last night, just the fifth game all season, and the first this month that Gene Segura started and did not record at least one base hit. Kane missed inside, one and two. Two behind the Nationals, Daniel Murphy for the Major League lead in hits. Washington hosting the Marlins this afternoon. Miami leads that one 6 1. Jose Fernandez is having a big afternoon for Miami. 2 and 2 on Segura. For Chip Hales, Diamondbacks trying to break the losing mojo here at home. Well, this is how you do it occasionally shake up the lineup a little bit. Gene Segura once again at the top playing second base. Chris Owings out in center field batting second. Jake Lamb at third base. Paul Goldschmidt at first base batting fourth tonight. Wellington Castillo doing the catching. Chris Herman out in center field. Yasmani Tomas in left field. Brandon Drury in right. And Ruby De La Rosa on the mound. Here's Chris Owings. Another multi hit game for Chris last night. Now with a seven game hitting streak. He's playing shortstop. You know, habits. I just put a number eight next to his name. And I was wrong. Shaking things up today. The catcher in center field has you all over Klimt. Just so excited. C O 295, 12 homers. And the way he's been hitting lately, you want him up there in the two hole. I was talking to the Giants TV analyst Mike Kruko before the ball game today about Matt Kane. Says he's throwing a few more breaking balls this year, especially to try to jump ahead in the count. There's Mike Kruko on the left, Dwayne Kuiper on the right. Connected at the hip. Mike was saying that uh, because Matt Cain had that right flexor strain and had some elbow nerve irritation last year for the last several years he hasn't been able to straighten his right arm at all you know which is common among a lot of pitchers you get to that certain point and it just won't straighten out any farther. Well now that he's got his elbow the way it's supposed to be cleaned out he can fully extend his right arm and basically had to learn how to pitch with a new elbow. Owings chases one upstairs. First strikeout for Kane. That'll bring up Jake Lamb. Kuko was also saying that early in the season, Matt Kane had no idea where his pitches were going. Just couldn't seem to command anything. But more recently, especially coming off that start against the Blue Jays, when he was really good, he started to hone that command in a little more around the strike zone. Worked eight innings in that star Tuesday against Toronto gave up just two runs six hits and seven strikeouts without a walk Jake Lamb batting third. And he takes ball one. Jake who tore the Giants apart in the series in San Francisco last month much more quiet in the return match this weekend two for twelve. Through the first three games here he's got a double and an RBI. Matt Kane lately, as you mentioned, Bob. Last year, coming off elbow surgery for bone chips, then a tendon strain. He wasn't able to make his first start last season until July. And once he came back, he finished with a 5.79 ERA, the worst of his career. And then had to have a cyst removed from his upper right arm in spring training in Scottsdale this year. So that set him back a couple of weeks.
elbow surgery to remove bone chips after the All-Star break a couple of years ago. Strained flexor mass. Suffered at the end of spring training last year, but he looks good here so far. Two strikeouts and no score through one at Chase. No score early. Hey, fans, on Wednesday, Fox Sports Arizona will celebrate the 12th anniversary of Randy Johnson's perfect game by replaying his classic performance at 1.30. Plus, this is a big plus, Randy will be live tweeting during the replay on D-backs Twitter page at d -backs. So he's going to be watching the game, tweeting as he watches it. How about that? So that's a great idea. Yeah. And he'll be tweeting like a madman while he watches that great moment in his career. Brandon Bell leads off the Giants second against Ruby De La Rosa. Got three outs on eight pitches to start off the first. This is a fly ball to Brandon Drew. One pitch, one out in the second. They retire belt. Here's Brandon Crawford. They got the Brandons back to back today. Crawford one hit in the series. He doubled Friday. He's at 248 on the year with four home runs. Boy, Bob, you uh, were talking about Ruby's aggression and the way he's believed in himself lately. He is on the attack here this afternoon. There's another one. Strike one. You must have been looking at my notes. Well, I heard your staff had its meeting, <laughs> as they always do, coming up with a Valley Honda dealer key to the game. And I will admit to overhearing some of that discussion. He oh. did not go. Yeah, our Valley Honda dealer's key to the game today, not only for Ruby De La Rosa on the mound, but also for the Diamondbacks' offense attack. Be aggressive. It's worked well for Ruby on the mound. Hopefully it'll work well for the offense in that batter's box. One and two. Yeah, Ruby said when he was struggling earlier this year, he just felt like he needed to go out there and pitch every inning like it was his last inning. And that approach has worked out very well, says it feels great. Offered. Takes a base hit away. A little bit of a jam shot, which gave Goldie an opportunity to move a step or two to his left before making that jump. Takes extra bases away from Brandon Crawford on a ball ticketed for that right field corner. Ruby loves it. Five up, five down for the Giants. Angel Pagan. 
306 and two homers. Ball one. Pagan has singled and walked in the series. He was 0 for 4 last night. Came back Friday after sitting out 11 games with a left hamstring strain. He has faced Diamondbacks coming up. No score in the second inning here at Chase Field. The D-backs and the Giants and our eye on defense for San Francisco is sponsored by Nationwide Mission Centers. Angel Pagan out in left field once again. Denard Span in center. Hunter Pence over in right field. It'll be Connor Gillespie at third base. Brandon Crawford at short. Joe Panic over at second base with Brandon Belt at first. Trevor Brown behind the plate today for the veteran right-hander Matt Kane. Paul Goldschmidt leads off the Arizona second against Matt Kane, who worked a 1 2 3 first with two strikeouts. And Goldie takes strike one, hitting 226 with seven home runs. What do you think, Bob, about Goldie in the cleanup spot today? It would be more interesting to hear what Goldie has to say about it. 436 of his 638 starts have been in that three hole. Hunter Pence. Knowing Goldie the way we do, uh, I'm sure he doesn't care. Whatever's best for the team, whatever Chip thinks will help jumpstart this offense, I'm sure Goldie's on board for any of it. Well, he's certainly tweaked his lineup. Chris Owings batting second, Lamb third, Goldie in the cleanup spot, Chris Herman in center. And he has Bonnie Tomas and Brandon Drury down near the bottom of the order with the pitcher batting ninth. Here's Castillo. 301 and seven homers. One for eight in the series. He was 0 for 4 Friday. A couple of strikeouts. And there is the new addition, Michael Bourne. Just called up from Double A Mobile today. He was in the lineup for Robbie Hammock yesterday. Went two for five at a loss to Jackson. 33 years old in his 10th big league season. He's been an all star two times. He's won a pair of gold gloves. Released earlier this year by both the Braves and the Blue Jays. Signed by the Diamondbacks about five days ago. And a lot of people on the Twitter were asking, well, why not Peter O'Brien? Peter's hitting about 380 at Reno with a bunch of home runs. But uh, the obvious question, I guess, BB, or the obvious answer, I should say, is, well, they need somebody to play center field. Yeah. And that has been Chris Owings, but uh, to try to get some more offense into the lineup, they've 
move Chris Owings into shortstop today in place of Nick Ahmed just to try to jumpstart this offense, get some guys on base, make some things happen. And in the minors, you have guys like Socrates Brito and Evan Marzilli, both of whom they like a great deal, but neither guy's really hitting all that much right now in the minors. So Bourne was really the best option for what they need at this moment. Three and two on Beef Wellington. And in a perfect world, you catch lightning in a bottle, just like the Diamondbacks did with Gene Segura. Michael Bourne, a guy that's had some success in his career, 10 year veteran, as you mentioned, a guy that knows the ropes, knows what's needed out of a backup outfielder. On strike three, that's three strikeouts for Kane. Uh, Kane's command a lot better just dots that outside corner with a fastball at 90 obviously velocity way down from what it used to be earlier in his career but a little better idea of what to do with this stuff now. Well they weren't sure that Bourne was going to actually get to this building by the time the game started so looking for more offense Chris Herman is out there in center field. 255 and four home runs and he becomes the first player in Diamondbacks history. To start games at catcher and center field in the same season. I mean, Craig Biggio jumps to mind immediately as a guy that may have done that at some point in his career. He initially was a catcher, moved to second base, ended up out in center field, back and forth. He played all three of those positions throughout his career. Needless to say, it's an oddity. The last time this has happened in the major leagues was 2008. Brandon Inge did it for the 08 Tigers. And you're right, Biggio flip flopped a lot. Mm -hmm. Not often in the same season do you play catcher in center field, but he actually moved back to center uh, very late in his career after starting out as a catcher and then moving to second base. Well, Matt Kane is dialing it up. He has struck out four through two innings so far. No score at Chase Field. Ballpark Diamondback Sunday Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is presented by our friends at Sanderson Ford. And we are set to go for the third inning. The Diamondbacks and the Giants, Matt Kane and Ruby De La Rosa. Boy, both guys look like uh, they mean business here today. Yeah, early on, throwing a lot of quality strikes in the early going. Both teams offensively uh, making some soft contact, if any contact. There's Kaylee. You're on, Kaylee. She is our Sanderson Ford Kidcaster. The whole family's up here in the booth on this Sunday afternoon. Haley just did a great job with uh, Chuck Drago announcing uh, the names on the PA here at the ballpark. Connor Gillespie, the third baseman, leads off the San Francisco third against Ruby. So far, Ruby six up, six down. Gillespie 316. He's got a homer. 
And has had only 19 at bats with the Giants this year. Just called up for the minor leagues. Getting the start at third in place of Matt Duffy who has the day off. Oh and two. Shot that rolls foul. Well, Ruby was talking about this reliever's mentality that he's picked up from those relief appearances early in the year, which really have seemed to sort of reset his clock and compass. He loves the approach of going out there and pitching every inning like it might be his last, like he's a relief pitcher in a sense, one inning at a time. And that attitude, he believes, has really helped him to minimize his pitches every inning because he makes him think like a bullpen guy. So he's had to go out there and just hit his spots and that results in not throwing as many pitches because he's more efficient than when he's more efficient he's actually throwing the ball harder the velocity has been noticeably up. Well, his stuff is so good when he's in and around the strike zone he doesn't get hit real hard overpowering with his velocity at times at other times that two seamer becomes a good pitch for him recently the slider has been absolutely devastating. It's the conviction in his pitches and the belief in his stuff that has seemed to make all the difference. This is there and it's two and two. Because he admits as the season has gone on, he has developed more and more confidence in that fastball. That has been the big weapon along with the slider. It starts with a fastball, and he says he didn't have that confidence in his fastball before, but now he's adopted this mentality. Just be aggressive, throw the fastball in the zone and see what happens. And what happens more often than not is they can't hit it. Trevor Brown, the catcher on deck. First base coach Bill Hayes. Looks like Kaylee's got uh, some siblings up here in the booth too. Mom and dad are here. Oh, the whole gang. Well, you, you can't distract them from the ice cream. Yeah, the ice cream is the most important thing right now. They've got the cold stone. They are locked in. Can't blame them. Three and two now on Connor Gillespie. about an eight pitch first and an eight pitch second but he's going to throw more pitches than that just to deal with Gillespie here to lead off the third and he got him second strikeout for Ruby well he had to work but he got the punch out Looked like a breaking ball on that outside part of the plate actually straight change up at 83 with that fading action off the outside corner. Trevor Brown getting the start this afternoon behind the plate for Buster Posey. 262 and three homers. Brown's three homers were his first three hits this year, and they came in his first three games. Since then, just one extra base hit. Drive this one deep to left. And there's another home run. That's number four, and it's one nothing Giants. Get ahead fastball right here to the backup catcher up in the zone at 94. 
That's one hitting coaches call a fence high fastball. If you just make solid contact, the ball's already elevated for you, and this time Brown rides it out of here to left field. Matt Cain. That's the way he started his season, Trevor Brown. He gets this up in the air behind second base. Segura has it, two outs. Hey fans, when the Diamondbacks win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Denard Span grounded out to lead off the ball game. After a four for four last night, had base hits in his first four at bats, then was hit by a pitch in the ninth, ended up scoring a run. You know, partner, we had to look into the conspiracy theory that the Diamondbacks and Papa John's were trying to save some money by winning on the road and not playing well here at Chase Field, so I didn't get my half off pizzas. You have been throwing that theory around lately. Did you? Is there anything scientific evidence to back it up? Not yet. <laughs> I didn't think there would be. <laughs> Segura retires Span, but Brown homers, and the Giants take a 1 0 lead. Third inning. Mark Geico legacy moment this day in baseball history. Back in 1973, a real young looking Nolan Ryan threw his very first career no hitter against the Kansas City Royals. First of seven no hitters that Nolan threw in his career. And the game happened to be caught by Jeff Torborg. It's his third as a catcher. Smart fingers. <laughs> seven no hitters. Can you imagine? Oh. As Bonnie Tomas a lead off the Diamondback third against Matt Kane, who's now got a one nothing lead. Trevor Brown a solo homer, his fourth of the year. You were telling me about the movie you just watched, uh, entitled Fastball. They did all this sort of scientific research, and they determined that the Nolan Ryan was the hardest thrower ever, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, different eras in baseball. Obviously, they had different technology to try to time a pitcher's velocity. I mean, uh, Bob Feller threw his fastball against a motorcycle that was driving by at whatever velocity. Uh, they had some low-tech equipment for uh, Walter Johnson to try to figure out how hard his fastball was. But with the technology we have nowadays. They went back and determined that Nolan Ryan at approximately 108 miles per hour threw the fastest fastball ever. It's a fascinating documentary. I think uh, baseball fans would love uh, 
to, to see the evolution of the game and how the velocity of the pitchers and the style of pitchers has really changed over the years. Yasmani Tomas gets this up in the air for Pagan. Just shy of the warning track, and he's got it for the first out. Seven up, seven down against Kane. Yeah, well, Walter Johnson used to throw the sidearm, yeah, basically. Yeah, the way down there, sidearm, and in the experiment that they, that they did in a laboratory, they had a, a, a big frame set up, like a six by six frame with copper wires, thin copper wires between the frame, and a plate behind it, and the ball would go through the copper wires and trigger the timing mechanism, and then when it would hit the plate, it would stop the timing mechanism. But the thing that was amazing is he was doing this in a pair of dress pants, a white shirt, and a tie. <laughs> <laughs> it was much more formal then. Brandon Dury. Well, he threw seven no hitters, so whatever you tell me, I'm going to agree with. Oh. He was the fastest. I know he grunted the hardest. And if that equates to speed, then there's no doubt in my mind he threw the hardest. Well, it had to be intimidating, oh. right? Everything about Nolan Ryan was intimidating. And he would throw a pitch and come off the front of the mound and take his throw back from the catcher and walk all the way around the first base side of the mound around to the back rubbing up the ball and looking at the batter the entire time. <laughs> And you were told early on as a young player, hey, if you happen to get lucky enough to make contact against this guy, don't watch the flight of the ball. Run as fast as you can. Otherwise, you're going to be wearing a rib ball next at bat. Pretty he was a little intimidating, too. I think so. <laughs> Randy Johnson way outside the ballpark. Dedicated this week. Well, Diamondbacks have had their own issues with Matt Kane so far today. He's got four strikeouts. He's retired the first seven he's faced, and he's ahead of Brandon Dury, a ball and two strikes. Kane does not look like a guy who was winless in his last 14 starts. 0 and 8 over that span with a 6.63 ERA. Brandon off the mound and into center, a base hit. First base runner for the Diamondbacks against Matt Cain. That's a center cut fastball for Brandon Drury. Well, I think of all the Diamondbacks hitters, he has consistently gotten the barrel on the ball more than anybody else. Doesn't always get base hits, but he barrels the ball up and hits it hard somewhere nearly every at bat. He is a hitter. What a young man they have here. Another reason why that Justin Upton trade from several years ago looks so good. Ruby pops up the butt attempt. It's got some spin on it, and Kane throws it away. Drury gets third, and Ruby's aboard. That one had a lot of spin coming down on like a sand wedge on a green, and it spun away from the Giants that time. It's kind of funny because Ruby actually lost the grip of the bat with his top hand and just grabbed a hold at the very end. I think that's what caused all the backspin on that bunt. Kane had some trouble as he bare hands it, fires it down that first baseline. Hunter Pence coming into your picture right there, backing up the play from right field. Otherwise, the Diamondbacks may have gotten a run out of that play. They put an error up on the board. The backs have runners in the corners. One out. Here's a look. Watch yeah, this land. Yeah, and, and the hand on the bat is what got me. When Ruby went to slide his hand up the bat, he completely lost contact for a moment. And there's a tapper to panic. Crawford. Segura oh. can't quite beat it out. And Matt Cain gets the double play ball he was looking for. No sign of a challenge yet from the Diamondback dugout. They'll stay right here for the moment. They're going to have a look. Glenn Sherlock on the phone. Remember, it's a catch when it's in the back of the mitt right there. Maybe by a cleat. The 
but there is no challenge forthcoming so that ends the bottom of the third will go to the fourth D-backs trail at one nothing. fourth inning and the rest of the rotation has been trying to get its feet underneath but in the meantime Bob Ruby has emerged as the go to guy here no question about it he has been the most consistent Diamondback starter his stuff has played really well since he made that transition to just getting up there and throwing the ball and attacking the opposing lineup and I think it bodes well because we know the rest of the guys in the rotation are not going to pitch this way the rest of the year got off to a bad start a couple of really bad outings that have skewed the numbers somewhat. Once everybody else gets on beam, uh, this rotation is going to look really good. Well, Shelby Miller is coming off two very encouraging starts. It's been three in a row for Patrick Corbin, really. Patrick uh, pitched a very good ball game the other night here. We know Zach Greinke is Zach Greinke, so the rest of the rotation is catching up, it seems, to Ruby, who's really flipped the switch since those two or three relief appearances. Seems to have adjusted his mentality and his whole approach out there, and it's worked wonders. Joe Panic, Hunter Pence, and Brandon Bell, two, three, and four are coming up here in the Giant Fourth. So far, the only hit of the ball game for San Francisco. Trevor Brown's solo homer in the third is fourth of the year. Panic popped up his first time up. He's having a big series after coming back from a slight groin injury that kept him out for six games earlier this month. He's got four hits, including two homers. Ruby started this inning at 30 pitches 21 for strikes. That's the same percentage we saw at Coors Field in his last start. He's ahead of Panic 0 1. Joe Panic, six RBIs in this series. He's walked twice, he scored three times. Begins today with a five game hitting streak. Called strike three. Ruby rings him up. That's three strikeouts for De La Rosa. That one in there at 96. Hey fans, the Diamondbacks and Geico are proud to offer military and first responders ticket discounts all season long, including half off on Sundays. For more information and to get tickets, visit dbacks.com slash military. Good crowd here this afternoon. Roof and panels closed. Hunter Penn struck out to win the first. Buckled him that time, but missed. It's 2 0. Oh. He had Pence backing out of the box there.
He's got him really off balance. So when he's able to drop that slider on the outer third of the plate the way he has against Pence so far in this ball game, that's nearly an unhittable pitch because Hunter Pence steps in the bucket a little bit. That front side flies open like that. Two and two. Stop for Chris Owens. Four in a row set down by Ruby since the Brown homer. Here's Brandon Belt. Belt flied out his first time up. Two singles, two walks in the series. He's also struck out four times. They'll put the overshift on the right hand side against the left hand hitting belt. Chris Owings all by himself right at the shortstop spot. Jake Lamb out there with second base umpire Trip Gibson. And Segura out there in short right. 2 and 0. Oh. Brandon Belt has reached base safely in 22 straight games. His career high is 24 straight set last year. And this is a guy who was cut way down on his strikeouts this year. He's doubled his walk rate. He's walking twice as much. And that's got him top five in the league at on base percentage. He's got more walks than strikeouts. Two. Well, obviously, when you're mixing and matching in the outfield and occasionally playing guys out of position, uh, you're going to play a little deeper. We've seen Yasmani Tomas do it in left. We've seen Brandon Drury do it in right. And you see that area that's kind of patched, that rectangular area. That's where most right fielders normally stand. And eventually it shows some wear and tear, so it's been patched. But you can see how much deeper Brandon Drury plays than most right fielders in the game here in this ballpark. He'll back up between that rectangular area and the warning track by the time the pitch is thrown. And that's because as an inexperienced outfielder, he's better off coming in on the ball than going back. Always more comfortable coming in, trying to keep that ball in front of you. The biggest fear you have playing out of position in the outfield is a ball hit over your head. Well, he hit it over his head there, and it's in the seats. And it's the same thing in every ballpark you go to. You know, you get to the middle part of the season, and because of there's been so many games played at the ballpark, and the outfielders all stand in the same vicinity usually when they're playing in a straight up position, and uh, that outfield grass tends to take a little wear and tear. You see big piles of sunflower seeds out there <laughs> where the guys all stand. Chris Herman out there in center. They miss with a 3 2 pitch. First walk issued by Ruby De La Rosa. Grant Trenbeth and his job, uh, his crew, have done a tremendous job here. After they had the uh, concert while we were on the last road trip, they did the ASU graduation here. And Grant and his uh, team have this field looking better than could have been expected. Oh, it's unbelievable when you consider all they have to deal with over the course of the summer here in the Valley of the Sun. Obviously, the oppressive heat in the summertime. Because we we've seen some fields already this year on our road trips that were a mess taking a beating already Miami was a disaster after Beyonce got through with that place but this place looks really really good Brandon Crawford I don't know if you've had the opportunity to see the grow lights that they have mounted on yeah. the carts. Yeah, you know, occasionally when it is so hot outside, you don't want to open up the roof and burn up the grass, but it still needs to get some light. So they have these big artificial grow lamps on carts that they'll wheel out from that right field bullpen and make sure that the areas of the field that need to get some light are able to do so. Oh and two on the Giants shortstop. 
Crawford laced one down the first base line his first time up Goldie skied up there and snagged it took an extra base hit away. Holding belt on the bag at first after the two out walk. Ninety six missed away a ball and two strikes. Two and two. Ruby trying to get out of this inning and strand the two out walk using that reliever mentality. He's just thinking about how every inning is like he's coming out of the bullpen. He's going out there trying to get three hitters and then sit back down. Do it again the next time. 50 pitches so far, 33 strikes. Fans Crawford four strikeouts for Ruby who strands that two out walk Diamondbacks trail the Giants one nothing. to the bottom half of the fourth inning Remember Jimmy John's delivery of the game oh to be a fly on the wall with these two guys Madison Bumgarner and Zach Greinke talking it over well before the game today as they were getting their running in in the outfield they were almost teammates Zach was down in San Francisco meeting with the Giants folks in the offseason thought about going there thankfully wound up here Diamondbacks trying to solve the riddle of Matt Cain, who's got a one nothing lead. Chris Owens first pitch when he pops it up. Brown will give it a look, and it's leaking near the seats and out of play. Cain so far has four strikeouts. He's given up only one hit. Now Brandon Drury one out single in the third. He's thrown 40 pitches, 30 of them for strikes, and he's ahead of Owens 0-1.
Diamondbacks beat Matt Cain last month at AT&T Park. He allowed three runs, five hits. Wench is four and two third in that start. Walked a season high four, but he's been a much better pitcher lately. There's a little flare out to Hunter Pence coming in, and he runs it down. He has lost each of his last three starts, Matt Cain. But Bob, as you mentioned, they were very encouraged by what they saw from him Tuesday. He lost to Toronto, but he pitched very well. Gave up just two runs in eight innings. So they think he may have turned the corner here. Well, there was a long stretch of his career where he was one of the most dominating pitchers in the game. You know, there's some speculation that all those postseason appearances and all the extra innings that he was forced to throw because of that. Uh, took its toll in the last couple of seasons for Matt Kane, but uh, looks like he's starting to round back into the shape the Giants expect. Jake Lamb struck out his first time. This was the very personification of the rotation workhorse Matt Kane. Earlier in his career, he threw at least 200 innings in six straight seasons. Won 13 games for that 2010 championship team. Pitched over 220 innings that year. That one is ripped toward the right field corner. That's a fair ball. Pence plays it off the carom. Jake Lamb is in there. That's a dozen doubles for the Diamondback third baseman. That ball fair down the right field line, right on the inside corner. He really spanked that ball, barreled it up. Easy one out double that time for Jake Lamb. Now in scoring position with a cleanup hitter, Paul Goldschmidt. Time to get Goldie going. He flied out his first time. His single in the eighth inning last night is his only hit in this series. He is one for 13 with four strikeouts. We are halfway through May here and it's been a difficult month for Goldie. He is hitting 188 in May. Walking less striking out more than he did in April. He has only three RBIs this month. Oh that one dropped in there for a strike said Hunter Wendelstadt and Goldie's down 0 2. No doubt the Diamondbacks offense needs this guy to get it going. He is the cornerstone of this offense and has been ever since he got to the major leagues. In his last 13 games with runners in scoring position, he's one for 12. Now he has drawn seven walks in those situations. Most teams, uh, no matter whether he's hot or not, they're not going to give him much to hit with runners in scoring position. That one gets behind Brown and Jake Lamb moves up. It skipped away from the giant catcher. Wild pitch charge to Kane. Well, A.J. Pollock is likely going to miss almost all of this year. David Peralta went on the DL today. Hopefully he's not there long. But those are your main offensive cogs here, and it all centers around this guy. So you're already two down now, and Goldie's struggling. You can only sustain some type of 500 record for so long when your big boys just are either injured or slumping. Yeah, I didn't mean to put it all on Goldie by any stretch of sure. the imagination in this series as a team they're four for 26 with runners in scoring position as a squad with 10 strikeouts. What we thought was going to be the heart of the order here Pollock and Peralta and Goldie. The herd has been thinned here. And other guys have done a nice job picking up. We've seen Drury get on a run. Jake Lamb had a big series in San Francisco. Chris Herman was immense in Atlanta. Other guys have chipped in. Chris Owings, the hottest hitter in the lineup right now. But eventually the big boys have to step up. This is a fly ball to center field. Lambs at third. Spain has it. Here comes Jake, and we are all tied. The RBI for Goldie.
saw something here the other night, Bob, and it's the first time in my time here I can remember it. The Goldie, Goldie chant from the Diamondback fans here. Don't recall ever seeing that before. You get the sense that all of D-back nation is being patient and they're all behind him because they know eventually that tide is going to turn. Well, he's built up enough equity with this organization and these fans that they understand that this is baseball and even the best of the best are occasionally going to do a little less than you expect them to do. But I think uh, like everybody else around baseball including opposing pitchers they know that it's only a matter of time until Goldie finds it and then look out. This whole park was chanting his name for a brief moment during a one at bat at the very beginning of this series and it was quite a moment. One and one on Wellington Castillo a strikeout victim his first time. And conversely you've got Welly here who's having a big month at the plate he's hitting over 330 in May. Guys, this one along the right field line. Foul of Brown for Belts. And that's the end of the inning. But the Jake Lamb double and the Goldie fly ball have provided the equalizer. We're tied 1 1 as we head to the fifth. The Gig Life High Speed Highlights presented by Cox. A lot of similarities today so far. Matt Kane, Ruby De La Rosa. Each guy retired the first seven they faced. Each guy has given up one run. Each guy has four strikeouts. Well, we're well aware of what Ruby De La Rosa can do when he's on top of his game. And as we mentioned with Matt Kane coming off the strong outing against the Blue Jays, might be turning the corner on his season. You never know when a pitcher's duel is going to break out. <laughs> we might have one on our hands here. Trevor Brown, a solo homer in the third, the only giant run. Diamondbacks just tied it up on a lamb double and a goldie sack fly. The numbers head to head so far. Pagan, Gillespie Brown, six, seven, eight in the San Francisco fifth. Pagan grounded out his first time up. He's gotten a lot of swings that look a lot like that lately. Overmatched. He's got the perfect combination when he throws that two seam fastball. It has movement away from the left handed hitter. We just saw Pagan flail at one that dipped off that outside corner and then the slider going the other direction to the righties. Ruby looked like he wanted that one. Doesn't get the call from Hunter Wendelstadt back there. Nice.
Not biting on that one either. Two and two. Let's see where three was. Four, maybe a little more off the plate. Just a hair off that inside corner. Amazing how often we've seen those called for strikes by different umpires earlier this year. Oh, broken bat flare. Here comes Herman and Chris Owings. Familiar with center field. Roams out there and catches it for the first out in the fifth. D backs and the Yankees starting tomorrow here at Shays Field. First time the Yankees have been here since 2010. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. First pitch for all three games on Fox Sports Arizona is 640. You can secure your tickets now, fans, at dbacks.com. Robbie Ray, Michael Pineda, Monday. Zach Granke, Nate Aldi Tuesday. Shelby Miller will start Wednesday's game for the Diamondbacks. And don't forget, tomorrow is a big day here as we have ceremonies honoring the late great Joe Gargiola Sr. Those ceremonies will start at 6, fans, so you really want to get down here early tomorrow and be in your seat by 6 o'clock because there's going to be a lot of on field activity before the game. Bob will be involved. Joe Torrey will be here. Various baseball dignitaries got a lot planned in what should be a very moving tribute to the late great Joe G. And the start of that D backs Yankee series. So that all starts at 6 tomorrow. So try and get down here early if you can. Don't want to miss that. Hey, you saw that commemorative patch that the Diamondbacks are wearing on their uniform this year to honor Joe Garagiola Sr. That, that's one of the cooler commemorative patches I've ever seen. Yeah, it really is. You're right. It's a good look. The Giants have a couple on their sleeves right now for Monty Irvin and some other folks. They have some numbers there. You can see that on Gillespie's front shoulder. It's a very unique design for the mm -hmm. Joe patch. And if you can't make it down as Ruby gets his fifth strikeout. Now Fox Sports Arizona will televise the entire ceremony alive before the ball game tonight starting at six so we'll have the whole thing covered for you but if you are going to get here make sure fans you're here early. Sixty pitches for Ruby 40 strikes. Two up two down here's Brown who homered. With a one out in the third. Two and oh, being a little more careful with Trevor Brown here. This was Brown in the third. Yeah, ambushed a first pitch fastball up on the inside part of the plate. Coming in here. Turned on another one, but can't keep it fair. That was a nice grab down there in the corner. Well, it's only been two at bats and that was a foul ball but Trevor Brown has proven to me he can turn around an inside fastball. It's time to go out there on the other side of the plate and see how he can handle it. He played his college ball Trevor Brown at UCLA he played a lot of first base some second base third base. Didn't actually catch a whole lot so he's a converted infielder I've seen a lot of that these days it mm -hmm. seems like. But he, didn't, he was not a power hitter. He finished his collegiate career at UCLA with only four home runs. Total. He's already got four this year in the big leagues. That's why they moved him to second base. He was not a power hitter. But he's found the power stroke in the big leagues. Full count now, three and two. Strike three. Come on back, Trevor. That's a strikeout, and that's six for Ruby, who has set down four in a row. Ruby De La Rosa has got it working here again today. The D backs and Giants are all tied up.
Giants and Diamondbacks tied 1-1. Fans, spend your Memorial Day weekend with us here at Chase Field. We've got a lot of giveaway items coming up that weekend. We have really upgraded, by the way, our model game here, BB. Oh, we considerably. Replaced Dennis Lamb with a beautiful Vanessa here. And Vanessa is modeling all the giveaway items we're going to have that weekend. Now, make sure I get this right here. May 28th, you've got the mesh pool bag. That Vanessa has here. Now this holds a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. That, that's a great item right there. That's not your ordinary pool bag. That's courtesy of Madame Holmes. On Memorial Day, Monday the 30th, you can get the Diamondbacks barbecue apron right there. That's another great item. That's courtesy of IHOP. Get your tickets for the weekend at dbacks.com and we'll see you then. The lovely Vanessa, thanks so much. Another great job. I don't, I don't know who's booking our models now, but he's I gotta say he's done a terrific job. Really? Somebody deserves a promotion. And up our game here. Chris Herman leads off the Diamondback fifth against Matt Kane. Chris struck out his first time up, and he's down again, 0 and 2 here. But as we know with Babe Herman, <laughs> when he's 0 2, that's right where he wants to be. A couple of 0 2 homers in Atlanta. Actually, that was a week ago today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Time flies. <laughs> Turner Field. David Van Ness pouncing on this one, our Golden Glover down the right field line. Or as he's known around the ballpark here, Dr. Van Nostrum. <laughs> There's the doctor. And Manning left field today, our Golden Glover. Mark Hicks, otherwise known as the Hick Dog. There's the Hick Dog. Mark Hicks. I need to find out if he's related at all to Dan Hicks. American singer songwriter Dan Hicks and the Hot Licks. I know you know them. <laughs> a little before my time. I'm happy, one of, to, happy one of their, to say. One of their big hits was How Can I Miss You When You Won't Go Away. Base hit for the Babe. I told you, get him in a two strike count. He's good to go. A leadoff single for Herman getting a start in center field. Hey, fans of a D backs homer today. It means free jumbo jacks tomorrow at participating Jack in a Box locations with the purchase of a large drink. Third hit for the Diamondbacks, a leadoff single brings up Yasmani Tomas, who flied out his first time. Yasmani, who went 0 for 8 in the first two games of this series, came into the ball game late last night in a double switch and went 2 for 2. Turn it two down. First pitch swing and Yasmani Tomas. And Matt Kay now with 60 pitches. How about 44 strikes? Brandon Drury singled his first time up. Brandon down in the eight hole here this afternoon. A lot of D backs fans here with us on a Sunday in downtown Phoenix. All the Little Leaguers were making their parade around the warning track before the ball game today. Great job by all our D-back staffers here yesterday. Took over the South Mountain Little League. Chuck Drago was down there doing the PA. Bobby Freeman was playing the organ. Randall Delgado, Jake Barrett were coaching them up. The legends were racing around the Little League field. Much smaller track for them, so that was good. When you get a D back Little League takeover, they bring the Chase Field experience right to you. Debbie Castaldo did another great job with that, coordinating all the efforts there. Something to see the, the big heads running around a tiny little field. I'm just trying to think who that would benefit. Which one of those four big heads has the best first step? Because yeah, that's key on a small field. Well, Brandon Jury's two for two. Another base hit the other way. I believe Gonzo won that one. That makes sense. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is it. Gracie had a lead and, as usual, blew it. Gonzo got the inside track, and he's the winner. Everybody seemed to have a really good time out there. The kids loved it. So here's Ruby. He's got Drury at first and two outs. Bounced over the mound. Get through there, and it does. A base hit for Ruby. That's three singles in the inning against Matt Kane. 
And Segura will hit with two on and two out. Perfectly placed. Diamondbacks middle, or rather, Giants middle infielder split wide apart and bounces one over the mound. Crawford with a dive could only deflect that ball into center field. Gurry had thoughts about trying to go to third base, but with two outs in the inning, he's in scoring position. You cannot make that third out at third base, especially with Gene Gene, the hitting machine, making his way to the plate. The old gong show reference. <laughs> Better than being the unknown comic. Segura 0 for 2. I can't believe in this era of uh, talent shows that no one has uh, come back with another Gong Show remake. Gong Show was strong. It was. J.P. Morgan on the judges. Mm -hmm. One one on Segura. Reaches out and hits a short hop to panic. And Kevin Strands too. He keeps it a one one ball game as we head to the sixth inning at Chase Field. On top of the six, J.R. Cardinals here. Tight game as we enter the sixth inning. One to one, Giants, D-backs. Hey, by the way, tomorrow the D-backs open their three-game series against the New York Yankees here at Chase Field with coverage in Spanish on Fox Sports Arizona Plus, presented by your Valley Honda dealers and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. To find channel listings and the complete 25-game schedule, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. Now back to the original members of the A-Team and 80 series. Bob and Steve. Which one am I? I'm not BA, I know that. <laughs> I have a great attitude. A pity to fool. That was Mr. T, BA Baracus. Ruby De La Rosa. Well, you have to pity the fools to try and hit against Ruby the way he's going right now. He's given up only one hit in the ball game. That was a solo homer by Trevor Brown, but he has walked one and struck out six and looks to be the same guy we've seen lately, which is Dominic. Yeah, we like that guy an awful lot. And Matt Kane is opposite number will lead off the Giants sixth. The numbers on Ruby so far. Just about as good as you can ask for. Brown ambushed a first pitch fastball with one out in the third for the only hit so far. Diamondbacks have five hits against Matt Kane, but uh, he's done a good job of getting out of trouble. Three of them in that last inning. But uh, was helped enormously by a double play ball hit by Asmani Tomas. So Kane span panic 9-1-2 here in the San Francisco Six. down by Ruby. Hey D-backs fans, it's Mountain Dew Decision 2016. Dew fans everywhere. 
They've asked to bring back two legendary flavors Mountain Dew Baja Blast and Pitch Black but. Two flavors go in only one leaves only one will stay you get to decide so vote online at decision. Dot com it's up to you Mountain Dew Baja Blast or Mountain Dew Pitch Black. It's the Thunderdome of soft drinks. Here's the darn span. Span who had an enormous night last night. Eight hits in the series, four for four last night. So far, 0 for 2. And this guy's really rounding back into form. He could only play 61 games last year in Washington. Lingering back trouble kept having to have cortisone injections. Eventually had three surgeries over one nine month stretch to repair a sports hernia. Needed hip surgery in September. He was a medical mess last year, but it didn't stop the Giants from giving him a three year, $31 million free agent deal. And so far, that looks to be a very good investment because he looks to be his old self. Two and two. And we mentioned those commemorative patches earlier. Monty Irvin, number 20. And number 12 was a former manager of mine, Jim Davenport, longtime Giants player and coach and representative of the organization. Passed away not too long ago. Jim Davenport had some great sayings. I would get a little broken bat floater into the outfield and the ball would land safely in front of an outfielder and he said that ball didn't even bend to grass. <laughs> he was from Alabama had that southern draw. This guy's such a bad hitter when he makes contact the ball don't make a noise coming off his bat. <laughs> one of the great infield instructors one of the great third basemen in the history of the Giants organization. Bigger and second tough play. Gene gets over there and throws him out. Span 0 for 3, 2 down. He's grounded out to Segura three times now. Giants do a great job honoring their past players, keeping them involved in the organization. Joe Panic 0 for 2. Yeah, I mentioned it in the series when we were in San Francisco earlier this season. It was. <laughs> Quite a shock uh, when Peter McGowan and his group uh, took over ownership of the ball club in 93 and they made a concerted effort to bring back all the Giants greats and you, know, you walk into a spring training clubhouse at Scottsdale Stadium and there's Willie McCovey in uniform there's Willie Mays and Mike McCormick and Jim Ray Hart Jim Davenport. I mean it, it was awe inspiring to see all these great former players uh, from the Giants history there in uniform in spring training. And Monty Irvin was a New York Giant. His last year was 55 of the Giants. They moved in 57. One of the great players in Negro League history with the Newark Eagles, Monty Irvin, in Baseball Hall of Fame. Behind on panic 3 and 0. You know the kind of damage he's done in this series so far. Two home runs. One of those on a 3 0 count, so be careful here. That was against Shelby Miller, a heartbreaker. They missed upstairs. Second walk issued by Ruby. That snaps a stretch of six in a row. He'd retired. And with two outs, he'll work to Hunter Pence. Pence has struck out, grounded out, and Ruby's had him off balance so far in both at bats. Pence has more walks than hits in this series, and that's where he's been trending all year. He's walking twice as much as he did last season. And we've seen that approach with several of these Giants hitters. A much more patient group this year, but not so much there. And that's another example. Pence has looked like that against Ruby all day so far. 
But sometimes there are certain pitchers and certain pitches that you just don't pick up out of his hand. And it looks like so far today, Hunter Pence has had all kinds of issues recognizing that Ruby De La Rosa slider. Now is it up to Wellington Castillo to recognize that? He should just keep going right back out there. He ain't broke. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He just can't help himself, it looks like. Sometimes in this situation, you might chase a fastball up. Let's see what they do here. Set up down and away again. Buried that one for the first ball, one and two. Yeah, the problem with going up the ladder on Hunter Pence is you've got to get to the top run. Because <laughs> he will swing at pitches head high and make good, solid contact. That's a good location for that 0 2 slider right there. He swings at two of them on the outside corner, so scoot it over a little bit further and a little bit lower and see if he'll chase that one. Eighty pitches for Ruby, fifty strikes. Fastball yeah. in, and that's another strikeout for De La Rosa. He's gotten pens twice. He's got seven in the ball game, and we are still tied. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Here's how the rest of the National League West shapes up. Padres 3-2 losers at Miller Park in Milwaukee. The Rockies at home trail the Mets 3-1 in the sixth inning. And coming up, it's the Sunday night game. Boy, Mike Leakes had a tough year in St. Louis. Alex Wood, 1-3 for the Dodgers. Chris Owings will lead off the Arizona sixth against Matt Cain. Owings, Lamb, Goldschmidt, 2-3-4 and four in a 1-1 ball game. Diamondbacks about hit the Giants five to one. CEO so far 0 for two. You struck out and fly out in the two hole here today. And playing shortstop the day off for Nick Ahmed. Another multi hit game for CO last night. He's got a seven game hitting streak. Batting 4 14 during that streak. He's knocked in five.
One and two. Struck him out. That's the fifth strikeout for Matt Kane, his first since the second inning, one away. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Keep getting the feeling, BB, that somebody for the Diamondbacks is going to step up here, hit one about 460 or so, and everybody's going to be off and rolling. Just waiting for that one big explosive crack. And then it'll just take the pressure off. Jake Lamb belted one down the right field line for a double his last time up. Another hit to right field for Jake, who's been pulling the ball a lot more this year than we've seen him before. Lays off that one, and it's one and one. Kind of thought we saw that big base hit in Colorado when Paul Goldschmidt hit mm -hmm. that ball about 900 feet to left field. One of four or five balls he squared up in that series in Colorado. Kind of thought maybe that was going to be the impetus to get the offense going, but unfortunately uh, it hasn't translated yet. Only one for 13 in the series. Drove in the tying run his last time up with a sacrifice fly after Jake doubled. Went to third on a wild pitch. He's ahead three balls and a strike. Jake has gotten so good at working counts. Kane threw him a first pitch strike. He's worked at three and one. Much more patient approach this year. Drives that one right at Pence, though. It backs him up. And he's got it on the warning track. That one was belted. Boy, the the Bapit gods really don't like Jake Lamb. He is. I, I can't, I've lost track of how many hits we've seen that he's had taken away the last week or two. Yeah, just in the last week or 10 days, the number of balls he's hit hard right at defenders. Hmm. That's the old batting average on balls in play metric. Here's Goldie. And Goldie for so long has been deadly effective driving the ball to the opposite field right and right center. But he has not done that this year. He is pulling the ball much more often than ever before. Not really hitting the ball up the middle the way he did last year. Staying on the ground a lot more often. In fact nearly half the balls Goldie has hit this year have been on the ground. The lowest fly ball and line drive rates of his career right now. And he's down one and two. But as we know, when he's got his A game going, it's one rocket to right center after another. Two and two. I really dig the red matte helmet with the red alternate mm -hmm. home jerseys. That's, That's a nice, nice look. Yeah, isn't it? Looks good. Here on another play ball weekend celebrating Major League Baseball's Little League initiative all over the country. But there'll be a lot of kids playing ball as soon as they get home today because the giveaway item today was a youth T ball kit, bat a ball. See that's a great idea right there. D back logo on it. Get him out there in the backyard, running around. Mm -hmm. Three and two to Goldie. 
I would venture to guess that I played a lot more wiffle ball games in my life than I played real ball games. Well, it's just easier. You're oh, out in the backyard. Man. You only need what, you know, three, four guys. Yeah, if that. Make yeah. up some rules. We used to just have a old beat up wooden bat and a few tennis balls at the end of the cul-de-sac and you play two on two. Nobody can hit the ball to right field and come up with all kinds of rules for yourself. That's one of the great things about baseball. You can always figure out a way to play with two three four guys. And if you hit it in Mrs. Mobley's backyard game over. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not going to go get it. That dog you go get it. You're killing me Smalls. <laughs> Wellington Castillo. Well, he has struck out, popped up 0 for 2. Well, you asked me a couple weeks ago with well, the first job I ever had, it was mowing lawns and shoveling snow, you know, making a couple bucks here and there, and most of that money went for repairing neighbors' windows. Did it really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that Brindley kid uh, broke another glass. Broke another window. Now, did you have to go over and actually do it yourself? No, or? no. My, my dad would do it. He was very, very handy, but I had to pay for all the materials. And Where were you playing? I mean, what was, uh, you well, didn't have a stand lot or something? Well, we did, but, you know, like you said, if you only have two guys, you kind of invent a game, and a lot of those ended up being in somebody's backyard, and windows were just a little too close. <laughs> Yeah, somebody's mailbox would always buy. We played in the street, and yeah. so it's a line drive right to the mailbox. <laughs> Wham! Here goes the mail. Well, it's funny you travel around baseball, and you know, anecdotally, you say, "Geez, we saw Giancarlo Stanton hit one over the sculpture in Miami, or we saw somebody hit one, you know, out into McCovey Cove, you know, way out into the cove." In the neighborhood, it was a little different. You know? <laughs> Your measuring sticks were a little different. Reaches out. And Takes the turn and heads for third. He's got a hurry, and he's in there. A broken bat bloke for Beef Wellington. And the Diamondbacks have runners in the corners with two outs. Not real sexy, but it worked. Hey, these are the ones you love with two outs in the inning because Goldie's off with contact. No other way is he going to make it to third base on that little blooper, but because there's two outs in the inning, he just puts his head down and goes. He'll make it into third base there, putting D backs on the corners with two outs. Well, we'll see if Chris Herman can get the big hit. He has uh, done that so often as of late. He singled his last time up, he's one for two. Strike one. Herman starting in center field this afternoon. And he has never played, had never played, even a single inning in center field in the major leagues. Last time he played center, nine starts in 2010, playing Class A ball in the twin system. And he's got Kane right where he wants him. He's down 0 and 2. And I mentioned it in the open of the show. Uh, you know, even guys that play outfield on a regular basis will tell you that it's much easier in center field. You see the location of the pitch on the plate. You can read the batter swing. Is he ahead of the ball? Is he behind the ball? You get a little better jumps. Got a real good look right in there to the hitting zone from center field that you do not have from the corner outfield spots. Looking for another big two strike hit. Kane missed upstairs. Herman, the first player in D backs history to start games at catcher and center field in the same season. Michael Bourne called up from Double A Mobile today. Kane at 90 pitches, 64 strikes. Goldie at third, Castillo at first, two outs. Two and two. And Chris's bat has become such a critical part of this lineup. You got to find spots for him. Last dozen games, he's hitting better than 370 with 14 RBI. Eight extra base hits in those 12 games. And looking for a big one right here. He's worked it full. Three and two. He's pulled the goldie. From 0 2 to 3 2. Third three ball count in this inning for Matt Kane. Old Penn still quiet for the Giants. 
means Castillo can get started from first. Bill playing behind the runner. Wellington at first. Two outs, three and two on Chris Herman, the center fielder. There goes Castillo. Walked him, bases are full. Well, Kane got the first two outs in the sixth, but he's gone walk, single walk. They're loaded for Tomas. Here comes Dave Rigetti. Bullpen will get busy for the Giants. Suarez, the right hander. Tomas, so far against Kane, has flied out and hit into a double play. He's been up there hacking. And the Diamondbacks, who for so long now have needed the big hit in the big spot, need it right now. Trying to get this offense going. Goldie is the runner at third, Castillo at second, and Herman at first. First pitch is lifted in the air, foul ground. Brandon Belt has room. Tomas fouls out on the first pitch and leaves him loaded. We'll go to the seventh, tied at one. Summer, you pitcher's duel here. Ruby De La Rosa has been sensational. He's given up only one hit, but it was a Trevor Brown homer in the third. He's got seven strikeouts, and Matt Kane so far has held the Diamondbacks to only one run as we start the seventh. Ruby, two walks, seven strikeouts. He's been ahead in the count most of the afternoon here. Looks very much like the guy we've seen the last few starts, which is to say, dominant. Continues to be dominant other than that solo home run by Trevor Brown you mentioned Matt Cain on the other hand has given up four hits and two walks in the last two innings and somehow managed to strand five Diamondbacks runners. Well that has Monty Tomas pop up hurt bases loaded. One one ball game. So they'll have to keep looking for that big hit as Brandon Belt who has flied out and walk leads off the Giants seventh. And the Diamondbacks will put the shift on here. Jake Lamb. Over from third base, right in front of second base umpire Trip Gibson.
Giants have won 11 of their last 14 games in this ballpark. And that needs to change. Today would be their first four game sweep at Chase Field since 2010. But Ruby is really giving them a ball game here today. Built as two singles and three walks in this series. Sends this one out to Tomas. At the track, he's got room. One away. Hey, fans, follow Arizona Diamondbacks baseball live with the MLB.com at Bat App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video, highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Brandon Crawford 0 for 2. Talked about the new look to this D-backs lineup. Chris Herman, the catcher, is in center field. Chris Owings has moved from center to shortstop. And Michael Bourne called up from Double-A Mobile, two-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glover. Peter O'Brien hit another home run for Reno today. That's 12 for Peter. And a lot of fans, in case you missed it earlier, will be asking, well, why isn't Peter O'Brien here, not Michael Bourne? Well, the answer is simply somebody's got to be able to play center field. And that's always a concern right with reserve outfielders you got to have at least one guy other than your center fielder who could play that spot. And you could do some maneuvering obviously Chris Owings could go from shortstop out to center field in a pinch if something happened we know he can play out there. Today it's Chris Herman the backup catcher playing center field which is probably not the most desirable situation for Chip Hale but something that uh, he's going to try here this afternoon. When yeah, David know. Peralta's healthy, he's yeah. a guy you can slide over into center field. But David went on the DL with right wrist inflammation today. That's why Michael Bourne is up here. And without Peralta to slide into center, Owings is your only center fielder. And you don't want to have to run your catchers and third baseman out there in center if you can help it. And they have some guys in the minor leagues who just frankly aren't hitting. Socrates Brito has had a slow start to the year. Evan Marzilli has battled injury. He's had a slow start offensively. So. Michael Bourne really when you look at it was the only option so here he is you know and above and beyond that Michael Bourne good career numbers in this ballpark in 19 games here at Chase Field he's a 368 hitter with six extra base hits he's stolen seven bases and I'm sure that somewhat entered into the decision to bring Michael Bourne on board. And if you were looking for a corner outfielder say then probably O'Brien is your guy. But with the way the lineup is constructed right now, he didn't go, says Jerry Lane. They needed a center fielder. Three and two on Crawford. Here are the numbers career for Michael Bourne. The Phillies, the Astros, the Braves, the Indians. Socrates Brito is homered today. That's his third. O'Brien hit his twelfth. It's a fair ball for Goldie. Ruby's there. Two down. So far, Ruby De La Rosa through six and two third has given up only one hit. Right down the stripe to Goldie, right over the bag at first. I mentioned it many times. That's a really easy toss for the first baseman. You're throwing directly at the pitcher who's running directly to you. Just throw it right at his chest, lead him right into that base. 90 pitches for Ruby, 56 strikes. And he'll work to Angel Pagan with two outs in the seventh. Pagan 0 for 2 so far. Ruby's spot will come up second in the Diamondback seventh. There is some stirring in the D-back bullpen right now. Oh. 
Tyler Clipper, the right hander. Andrew Chafe and the lefty in the Sanderson Ford bullpen. Movie right now at 92 pitches. He has thrown 96 in each of his last two starts at Miami and at Colorado. That's his high for the year. Missed inside. He's behind on Pagan. Three balls and no strikes. After going three and two on Crawford. He walked him. Third walk issued by Ruby. Well, depending on pitch count, there is a scenario where Ruby might end up staying in this ball game for another inning. Should Brandon Drury reach leading off the bottom half of the seventh inning, you could use Ruby to bunt him up into scoring position, but. That remains to be seen as Mike Butcher makes his way out to the mound. Give that bullpen a little chance to throw some more along with the trainer. This, uh, not sure what this is about. Ryan DePanfilo is out there talking to Ruby right now. As good as his command has been today, he really sprayed it around in that at bat by Angel Pagan. This badly, especially on ball four. All the right things to Ryan Japan flow and Mike Butcher to stay in this ball game. This is uh, the final pitch to Angel Pagan. Didn't see anything unusual. Not sure exactly what that was about. Connor Gillespie, the third baseman, will be the hitter. Ruby has so far struck him out twice in two at bats. He's got Pagan at first with two down. Not missing close here. He's missing by a lot. Now with 95 pitches, 56 strikes. This little wildness has seemed to pop up out of nowhere here. If he can get through this inning. He'll have allowed one run or fewer now in four of his last five starts. <laughs> Ruby back on April 23rd. After a relief appearance in which he got the win against the Giants, started here against the Pirates, was outstanding. One run, three hits, he went six. Even better in his next start here against the Cardinals, seven scoreless innings. He gave up only two hits. Was all right at Miami, four runs, eight hits, five and two third. Then the dominant start last time out at Colorado. One run on four hits and seven and a third. Missed away again at 92. Two balls on a strike. May have been looking at Ruby's upper arm there, something along the shoulder, the tricep area. Maybe a little discomfort. Shattered bat, and there's kindling all over the yard. Good change up right off the end of the bat, two picks and ten pegs everywhere. Well, 
he's a strike away from getting Gillespie for the third time in three at bats and ending this seventh inning. Diamondbacks in the home half will have Drury, De La Rosa, and Segura, eight, nine, and one, due up. Bullpen still busy for the Diamondbacks, Clifford and Chafin. Two and two. It gets behind Castillo. Pagan moves up. He's in scoring position as the go ahead run. And he's clearly hitting the wall right here. And this will go as a wild pitch, but I'm sure Wellington Castillo will tell you he could have given a little better effort. Just tried to reach across and pick that one out of the dirt cleanly. Unfortunately, got underneath the glove all the way to the backstop. If he doesn't get Gillespie here, do you let him face Brown, who homered in the third? It looks like he's running out of gas. I would say no. Just given the, the history we've seen from Chip Hale, uh, when there's a hitter in that opposing lineup that's had some success against a pitcher, Chip tends to uh, react rather quickly than wait and see what happens one more time. Well, he went three and two on Crawford, got him to ground out. He walked Pagan. Now he's three and two on Gillespie. And Brown, who has the only giant hit so far, a homer in the third, is on deck. Pitch number 100 on the way. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Here it is. Foul. Dr. Van Nostrom has it down there. A hundred pitches, 59 strikes. He has walked three, struck out seven, given up just one hit. He lost him. Back to back, two out walks. And that's going to be it. Well, Ruby, the tank got a little low here in the seventh, but he was outstanding once again. And Tyler Clifford will come in with two on and two out in a 1 1 ball game. Back after this. Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. By Lone Butte Casino. Get in on big wins. By Oregano. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano. Your neighborhood pizza joint. Location statewide. And by Gigablast. 100 times more powerful internet from Cox. Bring on tomorrow. 
Diamondbacks have brought on Tyler Clifford with two on and two out. 1-1 one, one game in the seventh inning. Tyler with 16 appearances this year and a 2-8-1 ERA. He got stuck with a loss Wednesday in Colorado when Nolan Arenado homered in the ninth. Just the second home run Tyler has allowed all year. And that's the last time Tyler Clifford pitched, so should be rested and ready to go. I look for that changeup to be a big weapon here against Trevor Brown. Show him a fastball somewhere he can't hurt you, and then lots of off speed pitches. Brown homered in the third, a solo shot, still the only giant hit of this ball game. He's got Pagan at second and Gillespie at first, two outs. This was a home run. First pitch from Ruby. Yeah, one of the few mistakes Ruby made all night. And you know, really, you can't call it a mistake. A first pitch fastball up at the very top of the strike zone. But Brown was ready for it and pulled it out of here to left field. Great to see Ruby walking off to a standing ovation here from the Diamondback fans some Ruby signs here they give him a big round of applause as he walked off the mound and he earned it Clipper to head 0 and 2 and another terrific ball game from Ruby De La Rosa they walked four two of those were the last two batters he faced had seven strikeouts and gave up just the one hit the Brown homer. Responsible for two base runners. Call strike three. Tyler Clifford comes in and throws three strikes. The Giants strand two. And as we stretch here at Chase Field, we will pause. To honor America on this Sunday afternoon at the ballpark. That you along as we pay tribute to our great nation with the singing of God Bless America.
What's next brought to you by CenturyLink. The Yankees are in for three starting tomorrow night. Michael Pineda will take on Robbie Ray in the series opener. Nate Evaldi and Zach Greinke here Tuesday. Shelby Miller will start uh, the Wednesday ball game for the Yankees or for the Diamondbacks. Yankees have not named their starter as of yet. Don't forget fans. The ceremonies on the field honoring the late great Joe G senior before the game tomorrow those ceremonies start at six we will have them all live for you here on Fox Sports Arizona so if you're coming to the ballpark make sure you are in your seat by six they'll have a number of uh, on field festivities there Bob Brendan will be down there Joe Torrey bunch of dignitaries so you want to be here for that Brandon Drury leads off the bottom of the seventh against Matt Cain in a one one ball game. Well I tell you what we are watching some highlights of the Blue Jays and the Rangers in Texas and it is getting ugly there has been a massive bench clearing brawl many many ejections Jose Bautista Adrian Beltre going crazy it spilled all the way out into right center field and we're not sure what started it all but it is out of hand well, a little early for that kind of stuff. Usually it's not until the dog days of summer when the temperatures heat up and guys look at their stats and realize, man, I'm not having a good year. Get out, ball. Brandon Drury, three for three. Lead off single. And Michael Bourne will hit for Tyler Clippard, making his Diamondback debut. Bourne was in the lineup yesterday for double A Mobile playing for Robbie Hammett called up by the Diamondbacks today when David Peralta went on the DL with right wrist inflammation. So here is Michael Bourne. 33 years old. Two time all star. Corners crashed. Gillespie in from third belt from first. Bourne signed by the Diamondbacks May 10th after he was released this April by the Braves then earlier this month by the Blue Jays played five games for the Bay Bears hit 318 there and there to get a bun down apparently and it's one and one Bourne started last year with Cleveland played 95 games for the Indians hit 246 swipe 13 bags and then was traded to Atlanta along with Nick Swisher for Chris Johnson. Atlanta released him after this season started. Blue Jays picked him up. He was in their minor league system for nine games, and then they let him go. And here he is with the Diamondbacks. Pulls back, takes a ball. It's two and one. Occasionally, in a situation like this, you'll see a manager use his best bunting pitcher, which would probably be Zach Greinke, I would assume, for the Diamondbacks. But by sending a hitter up there. Not only do you have the option of putting down a bud, but if those defenders charge a little too hard, Michael Bourne could pull it back, take a slash at it. Gets it down. Bill. And one play. They move Gurry along. Welcome to the Diamondbacks, Michael Bourne. So the go ahead run is in scoring position with one out for the top of the order. It's Gene Segura. Segura so far 0 for 3. He has grounded out three times, once into a double play. 3 4 on the sacrifice. There's a strike on one Segura 0 for 5 last night that snapped an 11 game hit streak and he's hitless again today. Only the fifth game all season that he started and did not have a base hit. Oh and two. Giants bullpen still busy. Kane at 105 pitches 72 for strikes. That's the veteran left hander on the left there Javier Lopez. Albert Suarez the right hander he's been throwing for a while down there. Oh and two on Segura. Out of play. Five games all season without a hit is that what you said. Only five uh, games that he started and, and did not started. get a hit. Yeah. And it was the first all month long in fact. 
know, guys that can go five hitless games in a week. <laughs> One and two. And Chip has said they'd like to get Gene Segura more days off, but it's hard to take this bat out of the lineup right now because he has been a really important cog in this ball club, especially the way the offense has been going lately. Go ahead, run at second, one out. Missed upstairs, two and two. Chris Owings on deck, Jake Lamb behind him. He's got Lopez up and ready for Lamb if it comes to that. Here's the 2 2. Fly ball, deep right field. Hunter Pence at the track. He's got room. Jury will tag and head for third. Two outs. Segura gave it a ride, but he's 0 for 4. Well, I think if you want one guy up there right now, it's probably Chris Owings, the way CO has swung the bat. He's 0 for 3 today against Kane with two strikeouts. But he comes into today riding a seven game hitting streak. Had another multi hit game last night. And if he gets it on the ground in the infield, he's got the speed to beat it out and get that run home. Just saw a replay on what happened in that Blue Jays Rangers game in Texas. Rubin Odor just clocked Jose Bautista with a right cross. Blocked that punch with his face. And the bench is emptied. It got ugly in Arlington today. Matt Kane, 110 pitches now. 1 0 on Chris Owens. He rolls it up the middle, but right to Crawford. Well, they got the lead man on, but they can't get him home. And through seven, we are still tied at one. If you can't watch the games on TV, you can now stream games live on your mobile device with the all-new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona and Diamondbacks baseball with you wherever you go. And we go off to the eighth inning in a 1-1 ball game. The D-backs and the Giants and the new pitcher for Arizona took the loss last night, Daniel Hudson. Huddy out there to start the eighth inning, his 16th appearance, or 17th appearance, a 1.65 ERA so far. And Matt Kane's spot will lead off the San Francisco eighth. It looks like we'll get Gregor Blanco to hit for Kane. 
Boy, Huddy had bases loaded, two outs, up against Buster Posey, and Posey drilled one to right center to score two, and that was the difference in the ball game last night in the ninth inning. Giants won it 5-3. So here's Blanco to lead off the eighth. Hitting for Kane, 246. And he is right now stuck in a three for 27 at the plate, Gregor Blanco. Was on base twice. He got the start here Thursday in the series opener. He walked in single. There's a strike at 95, 0 and 1. Blanco has a pinch hitter this year, 5 for 13. What a great pitching performance by both starters today. You rarely see two starting pitchers hook up the way these two guys did today. The, the Diamondbacks did have Matt Kane on the ropes a couple of times, but uh, that inability to come up with the big hit with runners in scoring position got him again. They're now four for 30 in this series with runners in scoring position. Yeah, he really got the better of Yasmani Tomas. Herman singled the lead off the fifth. Tomas hit into a double play. And then Yasmani. Came up in the sixth in a big spot. Bases loaded, two outs, and popped up on the first pitch. This one is in the air. Second base, Segura. One out. Top of the order rolls around. Here's the darn span. Don't forget, Yankees in for three starting tomorrow. DBACs.com slash tickets fans. Diamondback Live pregame show comes early 530 as we televise the on field ceremony honoring the late great Joe Gergio the senior and Robbie Ray will be on the mound for the Diamondbacks against the Yankees Michael Pineda. Zach Greinke will pitch Tuesday against Nathan Evaldi. A little flare that goes into foul territory on one on span. Hey fans, we invite you to participate in Gila River game nights by signing up at one of the interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Oh, and two. Huddy face span in that ninth inning last night and hit him in the knee with a pitch. Span was uh, four for four last night. A triple and three singles, but so far today, 0 for 3. One and two. to point out partner that we're yeah. seven and two thirds innings into this ball game and Chris Herman has played flawless defense in center field. I'm not sure he's had a ball hit to him <laughs> but you are correct. In fact I'm certain he's not had a ball hit to him. So he's been perfect but he's looked good. Panic go for two he walked his last time up. Sure, that was part of the Giants' advance meeting today. Don't hit it to center field, whatever you do. Would that, in all seriousness, would that come up? And I mean, what, what do you do? Try to hit it to center field? And no. Then, but if you happen to hit a ball to center field, uh, you know, maybe be a little more aggressive on the bases than you might normally be, just to see if he can handle the ball and throw to the appropriate base. Oh, 
Been keeping you updated on the minor league news today. Peter O'Brien hit another home run. That's 12. Socrates Brito hit his third. Archie Bradley pitched another beauty for the Reno Aces. After he pitched so well in Colorado last week, Archie today went seven innings, gave up just two runs on five hits. A walk and four strikeouts retired 11 of the last 12 he faced. Reno is up 9 2 right now in the eighth inning. A roller for Goldie. And Daniel Hudson announced nice bounce back outing for Huddy, a 1 2 3 8. We're still tied. Two, one. Well, that is our coordinating producer, Mark Rita. Came here two decades ago to be part of the start of D-backs baseball broadcast. He's producing our game today, but he's leaving his post as coordinating producer in about a week. Mark, we will miss you. It's been great working with you. I hope to do so in the future as well. The creativity, Brandon, that's what stands out for me, but uh, we're going to miss so much about Mark. Yeah, absolutely. I just appreciate him reaching out to me and getting me involved in the, the TV side of things. So thank you, Mark, for getting me on the pre and post game. We've known him as the game producer as well as the uh, coordinating producer here for our network. So, Mark, you'll be missed. Guys? Was that a live shot in the truck? Well, they're all sleeping down there. Well, yeah. <laughs> How about a stand up? Come on, Mark Rita. Come and take a bow. There, there you go. There he is. And Senior he's, Rita. He's now molding young minds at ASU, teaching at the Cronkite School. Mark Rita, one of those uh, that have been here since the very beginning. There are very few people that have been with this organization since day one, and uh, Mark Rita certainly is going to be missed. And a lot of Diamondbacks fans remember when we got started, an expansion ball club wasn't always the most scintillating baseball on the field, so we tried to make up for it with. Some of our pregame shows and our opens to our game shows out in the desert, down at the ostrich farm, and uh, boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, all over the place. So, uh, Mark Rita, best wishes to you in the future, and thanks for everything. Well, Bruce Bochy goes to lefty Javier Lopez to face Jake Lamb to open up the Diamondback eighth, and Chip Hale counters with Phil Gosselin, who hits for Lamb and draws a leadoff walk. So here comes Bruce Bochy. Lopez couldn't get his man. It wasn't the lefty he was supposed to face. He got Jake Lamb to ground out with the bases loaded to end the ball game Thursday, you'll recall. And now we'll go to right-hander Hunter Strickland to face Goldie with Goslin to go ahead and run it first. Nobody out back after this.
Ball ballgame. Diamondbacks have the go-ahead run on first. It's Phil Goslin, and here comes Paul Goldschmidt to face the new giant pitcher, the right-hander, Hunter Strickland, who came on to work the eighth inning last night and gave up singles to Goldie and Chris Herman. Goslin eventually drove in the tying run with a sack fly in that inning last night. And here's Strickland and Goldie round two. Any idea, any thought, any inkling, any even little smidge of an idea, of a thought, of a notion, of a concept, of an idea that you might bunt here? Nah. Yeah. Figured I'd ask. I mean, if he could bunt for a base hit, there's a lot of room down that third baseline, and certainly it would catch the Giants and everybody else on this planet by surprise. <laughs> Gillespie well back at third. He hits it right to him. They get a one, and that's it. Well, that's the only reason I was asking. One away. Here's Wellington Castillo, who singled his last time up. He's one for three. Chance of beef all over the ballpark. Looking for that one big hit to snap everybody out of this funk. 97 strike one. Only at first, one out. 0 and 1 on Wellington Castillo. The center fielder, Chris Herman, yes, you heard that right, is on deck. get the lead off man and again they cannot get a run across we will go to the ninth still time Half of the ninth inning, Native American Recognition Day at Chase Field is June 11th. Arrive early to the game against the Marlins and add the exclusive d backs tribal cap to your collection, courtesy of Gila River Casinos. For ticket information, go to dbacks.com. A couple of defensive changes. Phil Goslin stays in the ball game and will play third base. 
Brad Ziegler, the closer, on to save the tie here. Standard operating procedures around the major leagues bring your closer in to save that tie, figuring you're going to get the last at bat in the ball game with a chance to possibly get a win for Brad Ziegler in the ball game today. Hunter Pence, Brandon Bell, Brandon Crawford, three, four, and five, and the Giant ninth. Diamondbacks have out hit San Francisco seven to one. And the Giant one, and Trevor Brown, Homer, in the third. The only hit allowed by Ruby De La Rosa, who was terrific once again. Ruby. And Hunter Pence all tied up in knots, but against Brad Ziegler, he laces the first pitch he sees right back up the middle. De La Rosa got him twice on strikeouts. But he jumps on the first offering from Brad Ziegler. I think that ball got a bit of Brad's hand right there. He stuck the right hand out there just to instinctively to try to knock that ball down. He doesn't look at it until well after the play is over, but it looked like it clipped him on the fingertips there, possibly on its way by into center field. Ryan DePanfalo out to have a look. I mean, on a pitcher's hand, you're worried about every little hangnail, every oh, fingernail. Yeah. It's like Brad saying he's okay. Giants in a similar situation than the Diamondbacks uh, in that bottom of the eighth inning after Phil Gosselin had walked to lead it off. We kind of joked about whether Goldie would put down a sack bunt. Giants in a similar situation with Brandon Belt now making his way to the plate, and I don't think there's any chance we'll see Brandon Belt attempt a sack bunt. Chip Hale wants to make absolutely sure that his closer is okay before we keep going here. And the answer is yes. You know, though, those guys always lie. <laughs> so they want the ball. They want to pitch. They want to be in these situations. They're not going to say anything to the contrary. What Pedro Martinez told Grady Little, yeah, I'm, I can keep going. Sure. Ooh. Not so much. Belt has twice flat out and walked over two. Base hit. First two have reached with singles against Brad Ziegler on two pitches. Now you could possibly see a bunt from Brandon Crawford right here, a guy that's more likely to be asked to move those runners up. He's yet to put one down this season. Not a big part of Bruce Bochy's arsenal. Looking down to Roberto Kelly at third. Crawford 0 for 3 today. He's got only one hit in the series. That was a double on Friday. All the more reason you might see him try to put down a sack bunt right here. None this season, six in his career. Goslin is in on the grass at third. Only in front of the runner, belted first. Swing it away. Another base hit by Segura. They will wave Pence. Here he comes. Here's the throw. It is not in time. The Giants take a 2 1 lead. Three pitches, three singles. And it's 2 1 San Francisco. Talked repeatedly about how deep the Diamondbacks outfielders play, and on balls like this that roll through the infield with a runner in scoring position, this is where it's really going to rear its head. Brandon Drury charged hard, got off a strong throw, but Pence scores well ahead of that play at the plate. Well, the Giants went through eight innings with only one hit. That was Trevor Brown's home run off Ruby De La Rosa in the third. They have opened up the ninth inning. With three hits on three pitches from Brad Ziegler. And now it's second and third, still no outs for Pagan, who looks at ball one. He's 0 for 2. He walked his last time up. Bell to third, Crawford at second, a run in.
Diamondbacks have had a lot of chances to take the lead in this ball game. They had three hits in the fifth against Kane. Had a double play in that inning. Three straight reached in the sixth. A walk, a single, and a walk. Tomas popped up. Leadoff man aboard in the seventh. Sacrificed him over, couldn't get him home. They have had their chances. They've out hit the Giants 7 4, but trail it 2 1. 1 and 2 on Pagan. Crawford earlier in the ball game. Now America's first baseman saves two runs right there. It's our Chaz Roberts cool play of the game. We didn't even really have much time to jump that time, playing in right at the edge of that infield grass. It was snare that one and keep it out of the right field corner. Only Crawford could have walked home from second on that one. Connor Gillespie has struck out twice and walked. First base open, they'll put him on. And try and set up the force at any base. Trevor Brown, who homered in the third, will be the hitter. Diamondbacks in the home half of the ninth will have Chris Herman, Yasmani Tomas, and Brandon Drury do up. Six, seven, and eight. Pitcher spot after that. So the bases are loaded. Chip Hale's going to bring Ryan DePanfilo out to have another look at Brad Ziegler's throwing hand. Well, any kind of injury to your hand or your fingers out there on the mound, as you can imagine, the throwing motion and I don't even know what that would be called, not necessarily gravity, but the, the force of all that blood rushing down your arm out into your fingertips could possibly aggravate whatever it is that uh, happened to Brad Ziegler on that line drive up the middle. Well, you just saw Hunter Wendelstadt, the home plate umpire, signal one into the giant dugout. Ryan DePanfilo, the assistant athletic trainer, left the mound. Chip Hale stayed. So that would indicate that counts as a mound visit in the Senate. Yeah, as long as you're out there talking about whatever the medical issue happens to be, it's not considered a visit to the mound. But if you stay there and talk about any strategy whatsoever, then it becomes a mound visit. So they're loaded with a one out for Trevor Brown, who has struck out twice in Homer. They get one. They get two. That's why you give Gillespie the free pass. Ziegler gets the ground ball he needed, but the Giants get the go-ahead run. Bottom nine on the way.
Need a run to avoid a four game sweep at the hand of the Giants who put Matt Duffy in there at third for Connor Gillespie and they go to their closer. At least he's been the closer most of the times in this series. You'll recall the opener here Thursday after he walked Goldie to load the bases. Bruce Bochy went to Javier Lopez to get Jake Lamb and Casillas stormed off the mound while well, he apologized the next day. And in fact, he got the save the next day, his eighth of the year, but he has a blown three saves tied for the most of the major leagues. And it worked to Chris Herman, Yasmani Tomas, and Brandon Drury do up here in the Arizona ninth, six, seven, and eight. Herman getting a start in center field, the first Diamondback ever to start games at catcher and center field in the same season. Will lead it off. He has singled and walked. He is one for two. D backs about to hit the Giants 7 4, but they trail it 2 1. And the Giants looking at their first four game sweep in this ballpark since 2010. They have won 11 of their last 14 here at Chase Field. A shade Herman over toward the right hand side Crawford the shortstop almost directly behind the back at second and Duffy all by himself in the hole at third. Well, it was a week ago today in Atlanta when we were in extra innings, and Chris Herman was up there with an 0 2 count and hit a two run homer that helped complete a three game sweep of the Braves. He's up there again 0 2. He has played, as Bob pointed out early, a flawless center field. Just did get a piece of it to stay alive barely. Now, Trevor Brown saying that ball hit the mitt. Popped out, but he got the mitt back underneath it before it hit the ground. We'll take another look right here. Oh, he's right. Cruz Bochy coming into in. his yeah, up into his midsection. Looked like he might have gotten the mitt underneath that before it hit the dirt. He wants him to ask for help here. I'm sure that's what he's uh, hoping for from Hunter Wendelstedt. That he'll get some help from uh, possibly one of the corner umpires that maybe had a better view. Umpire judgment calls are not subject to review. They will huddle up. Off the knee, up into the midsection, back down the leg, and yeah, it looked like he scooped the ball or the glove underneath the ball right there. I've always wondered why they don't make these plays subject to review because it's a split millisecond there did it hit the bat did it get the glove Did it hit the ground first and then I mean there's so many little tiny tiny instances of judgment and they leave it up to the judgment when you can clearly see by the replay we've shown you that he did catch the ball and it's impossible for the plate umpire to see that it's right in front of him but he's blocked by the blocked catcher by no the catcher chance. yeah you can't see that play so but they don't make this subject to review which doesn't make a ton of sense Given the angle that we've just shown you, and it's a pretty definitive look. Certainly a much more definitive look than Hunter Wendelstead had back there. It's an extremely difficult call because you're hearing sounds. You're hearing the ball hit the glove and the equipment and the shin guard and maybe the plate or maybe the bat. You don't know. No. Nope. We're going to keep going here. Nobody had it. It's not surprising. I mean, the other umpires are standing a good 100 feet or more away from home plate when that happens, and they can't have a real good look at it either. As yeah. Brown was hunched over with his upper body, and that thing was pinballing around body parts back there. 
Well, we got to take advantage of an Absolutely opportunity here. Absolutely take advantage right here. Diamondbacks have been given an extra out. One and two on Herman. Zoom ball, two and two. Got him. Well, it worked out for Casilla. He got the strikeout. One away. Hard slider starts it right over the heart of the plate. Looks like a very hittable pitch, but a lot of down and in movement that time. Took it right underneath the swing of Chris Herman. Now, as Monty Tomas has had a tough day. They had a leadoff man aboard in the fifth with a single by Herman and Yasmani hit into a double play and then in the sixth inning with the bases loaded and two outs he popped up on the first pitch so he's 0 for 3 in there against Casilla and he takes ball one. Osmani 0 for 8 the first two games of the series. He came into the ball game as part of a double switch last night and went two for two. Drury on deck. 3 0. You taking two here? I think just one. Yeah. You take a strike to run the count to 3 1, and then if you get a, exactly the pitch you're looking for, because, uh, you know, long ball ties this game up, and this guy definitely has home run power. Well, there's your one. Yeah, so now whatever pitch it is, Yasmani Tomas wants to hit out of the ballpark. That is the only pitch you swing at in this count. Even if it's a strike, but not necessarily the strike you're looking for. No. This is your dream pitch right here. Otherwise, take it. He does that, draws a walk, tying run aboard. Get it back there by Asmani Tomas. And now they'll send a pinch runner out there. Nick Ahmed is going to come out and run for Yasmani. He's the tying run with one out. Go ahead run is at the plate. Brandon Drury. We could have used a patient at bat like that back in the sixth inning when the bases were loaded and Yasmani came up and chased the very first pitch he saw way out of the zone, popped it up to first base to end the inning. So here's Drury. Pitcher spot is behind him, Ricky Weeks Jr. in the on deck circle. Drury three for three, three singles. He's belted three balls into right field. 3.15 on the year. He has it safely in every game in this series. Strike one. Hasn't been spot on today. He has missed the zone by a wide margin on several pitches. That's a fastball that runs up and into Drury, able to get those hands out of the way that time. Well, he got himself behind 3 0 on Tomas. So far, 13 pitches and more balls than strikes. It's down in the gap. Ahmed will head for third. And he is in there. Brandon Drury, four for four. Tying run 90 feet away with one out. He's a hitter.
Center cut fastball might have got in on the hands just a tad but this is a strong young man right here muscles it out into that gap in left center. Nick Ahmed uh, players call it ghosting an outfield. As he was getting to second base he started to slow down ever so slightly let Angel Pagan see him start to slow down and then turned the bag at second and sprinted on to third and made it easily. Ricky Weeks Jr. Nick Ahmed is the tying run at third. Brandon Drury is the winning run at first with one out. Weeks at 235. He started last night in left field, went one for four with a double. Inside for a ball, 1 0. Ricky, six for 18 as a pinch hitter this year. Four doubles, he's knocked in three. In there for a strike one and one. Opponents against Casilla this year with runners on base only two for twenty. Two. Ooh, break a ball that time. Got it in there on him. Streaking across the bag out there at second. I'm not so sure he was on the base at second when he had contact with the baseball. We can look at that as well. Did Brandon Drury break the Chase Utley rule? It looked like there was a clear out at first base. Brandon Belt uh, seemed to have his left foot on the bag as he picked that throw out of the dirt. My question is out there at second base. Yeah. Crawford came across that bag in such a hurry as you said a slowly hit ball it was going to be tough to turn to he really had to rush it. The runner is not allowed to change his pathway to the base while sliding in order to break up the double play. That is the Chase Utley rule as it's known. Does he leave his pathway to the base. The foot is on the bag. Well, there's a lot to review on this particular play. It's was, to, yeah, it's tough to see on that angle. We just saw if Belt had his foot on the bag long enough. Yeah, it looked like he did, but it was hard to really tell. This is going to be a judgment call Man. on the new slide rule. The slide of Brandon Drury, the neighborhood play by Brandon Crawford, and did Brandon Belt keep his foot on the bag at first? It's rule 6.01 J. Slides on potential double plays will require runners to make a bona fide attempt to reach and remain on the bag. Reviewing that, or they could be reviewing this. Belt's foot on the bag. You can see Gabe Morales, the first base umpire, signals safe. Belt came off the base. That's the call on the field. 
But remember, if they rule that Brandon Drury broke the new slide rule at second base, both the runner and the batter are out automatically. Yep. So even if Weeks was safe at first, if Drury broke the slide rule, they're both out, and that ends the game. Now, you can't initiate contact with the fielder if it's a permissible slide. It's not like he can't touch the fielder. And Brandon didn't appear to reach out and try and grab him with an arm. We've seen that a few times. Here you go. Does he change his pathway to the bag? It looked like he did slightly. I'm not sure, and it, and it looks like Gabe Morales may have missed the call at first. I, I, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, We've looked at it from a couple of different angles and a nice pick in the dirt by belt over there at first base. He's definitely has his foot on the bag with the ball in his glove and then comes off. I don't think there's any doubt about that one at first base. The question is uh, the drama going on out there at second base. Specifically prohibited from changing his pathway to the base or utilizing a roll block. Safe and out is the call. Well, no, he's calling them both out now. Well, he got the call wrong initially. Now, okay, he signaled safe and out. Now he's signaling out, out, and the game is over. Here comes Chip Hale. Explanation from Jerry Lane, the crew chief. Again, that call is not made here. It's made in New York. So there's not a whole lot to argue about, and the Giants end up sweeping the series. That's too bad. I mean, unfortunately, one of the byproducts of the new rule is uh, occasionally a game will end with the umpires on the headsets back to New York. Let's take one more look now. Remember, the, the call at first was safe, which was pretty clearly incorrect. One more look now. There's one out in the inning. There's one out. He got the foot on the base. And there's two outs. He kept his foot on the back, as we saw from the other angle. So it appears like both calls were correct. It's a double play and that ends the ball game. Yeah, and the slide rule of second base used to be if you can reach the base with any body part. I mean, you could slide five feet wide of the bag as long as you could reach it with your hand, but that has obviously changed with the new Chase Utley rule out there at second base. And if Brandon Drury had been ruled in violation of the new slide rule, then the out at first would have been recorded automatically, so it wouldn't have mattered the call over there. In any case, the Diamondbacks drop this one. 2 1 and the Giants have a four game sweep here at Chase Field their first four game sweep in this ballpark but since 2010 they have now won 12 of their last 15 games here and the Diamondbacks losing streak drops to five in a row Diamondbacks by the way challenged was Crawford off the bag at second base we're being told and the Giants challenged that call at first base with Brandon Belt's foot so both teams had challenges on that play just to clarify. And uh, now we have the results of that call. So you've got BB a four game sweep here at home and a five game losing streak. Well, Unfortunately it shouldn't have come down to that final play of the game. Diamondbacks had a lot of opportunities today offensively to blow this one wide open. Unfortunately uh, as has been the case over the last week or so just couldn't come up with that big knock when they needed it the most. Well let's uh, wrap it up with Diamondback Live post game show Jody Jackson standing by Jody.